Hi, Mike Amundsen here talking to you about designing and building great web APIs, all based on my book with Pragmatic Publishing. Uh, now I want to talk to you about something that came up just last week. I was working with a group of people. We were using Postman to do tests, and we were talking about JSON web tokens. How do I actually make sure that I've got an access token and integrate that into my test suite and still keep all the tests automated? This is really important. So I'm going to show you in just a couple of minutes how you can sort of orchestrate, in my case, Auth0, and Postman all together into an automated script for doing testing on secure URLs. So let's jump right in. We've got a lot to cover. So let's look at the big picture first. So here we are. I've got my test. I did all the things we talked about in previous screencasts. I got my happy path, my sad path. Everything's working great. So I'm about to go here and I want to do a simple test. So I run my first test and what's going to happen is all of a sudden I'm going to get an unauthorized error. It turns out now that the API is secured, I have to do some extra work. I'm going to have to be passing tokens with every single call. There's lots of ways you can do this inside the Postman interface. And I'm going to show you the quickest way to get it done in the most consistent way, the most scalable way. And that's through pre-request scripting, not through the authorization and the headers and the other part. And I'll show you that in just a second. But first of all, what I've got to do is figure out what is it that I have to actually accomplish? What do I have to get done? What I've got to do is I've actually got to make a post to Auth0 to get the information I need. And just like everything else, that means I need a script. So I've got the script set as a gist. If you can look down in the description, you'll find the link to it here. But here's what I'm doing. I'm actually going to make a call inside the pre-request to get that token and insert it into the headers. I'm going to be based on some domain variables here. We'll talk about those domain variables in just a second and where they come from. Put together a request to Auth0 for their token. Uh, pass these variables in, these uh, uh, request elements, an ID, secret, audience, and client credentials. That's how we do machine-to-machine -machine APIs. And when I make the request, I'm going to take the body from JSON, pull out the access token, place that into an environment header, and then populate an actual header that's going to allow the authorization header that's going to allow me access to all the APIs. So that's a lot going on in a tiny, tiny little bit of code. But what we're going to need to do is run this code at the start of every test series to make sure we've got a token. So how do we do that? Well, it turns out we've got to get some information from Auth0, right? We've got to go get these pieces right up here, these environment variables. Let's figure out how we're going to do that. Now, when you set up an app inside Auth0, it's going to give you almost all this information in one place. My domain, my client ID, and my client secret. I just need to copy those over, and I'll uh, be able to paste those right into Postman. But I need one more thing that's not easily available, and that's this thing called the audience. The API audience is like the identity of the caller. And this here's the API audience. When I built my application and my API, I had to declare an audience so I can copy those as well. So those are the four things I need to do. Now I got to take those four things from Auth0 and drag them with me back into Postman to figure out what to do with them. And that's where this comes in. So what I need to do is I'm going to show you the, that idea of setting up the environment variables. So here we go. I'm going to slip down here, client ID, client secret, audience, and domain. This is where I'm going to copy in those things from Auth0 into Postman. I'll be creating that authorization variable in a little bit. We'll show you how that works in just a second. So now that's almost the whole set. I'm almost set and ready to go. What I really need to do now here, let me set that up, is I need to go into my folders. And I need to call, during the pre-request script, I need to call that little routine that I showed you. Now I use a, a utility library. Check the comments down below. Uh, the utility library makes a call to this one function that uses the domain, client, secrets, audience, IDs, all that information, and sets a token for me right there and creates the header. Now, I do this at the folder level. That way, all of the scripts in that particular folder are going to work. That means I need to do it at every folder level, by the way, which is, can be a bit of a bummer. But I actually like this because that means I can actually create a folder where I can test all the authorization details as well. So I can actually write a series of sad and happy tests just for authorization purposes. In this case, I just want to go ahead and use my regular set of tests. Now I should be able to go over here to the uh, regular home and without making any other changes except adding those uh, those are the functions. Now I should actually get back the data I'm looking for. And sure enough, there it is, all the information I need. And again, what was really going on? Let's jump over to the console. I'll show you what was really happening. When I made this call for a get, remember? When I made this actual call here, I got the unauthorized element, right? So the next time, 
before I completed the get, I actually in the pre-request script actually called out to Postman. So here's the case where I actually called uh, to Postman. I passed all my information and then I actually got the uh, value back and the access token. It's the access token that I was looking for. Once I got the access token, then I could actually copy that using my function into the rest of the application. So now I can run a full series just like I had before and I'm gonna get all the tests taken care of for me. And that's because I use this one little function to do all of this work. Now what's really great about all of this is not only can I now run all of the tests like I usually have, I can also run all the automation tests from my command line using Newman. We talked about Newman in a previous screencast as well. So now all of the tests that I was running before, I can still run in Newman without having to worry about any of this. So all I need to do is go over to my command line section now, now that I've got that up and running. And we talked about this before. I can run a test, test run for locals. And it's going to go ahead and pull the... Uh, the scripts, pull of the environment variables, all of the other assertions, then run the test, store all that information in an output variable for me that I can actually inspect and test later. So now I can actually look here and see my test output. And sure enough, all of the information is there. I'm getting 200 OKs throughout. I'm not getting any 404s. And at the same time, I still get all of my uh, stats as that, that I used to before. All the scripts are running, all the assertions are running, everything is set. So that's really it. That's quite a bit that we covered in just a small amount of space, but hopefully it makes sense to you. So what we really did is we set up Postman to actually be able to make a call to Auth0 in pre-request, get the token, shove the token into the header, and then Postman uses that header for every single request. Now I've completely automated the process of JWT inside Postman for Auth0. Check the, the bug. There's lots more to come. Uh, stay tuned. We'll talk more about designing great web APIs in the future. So long.